once again Pray in me a clean heart oh God renew a right spirit within me right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence so long take not thy holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation renew a right spirit within me Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You are right, Spirit, within. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Blessed be their name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful and where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. When the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all that it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Suffering, and though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name, and you give and take away, you give and take away, and my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, I know that you give and take away, you give and take away, and my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. worship you I have within me I give you praise all that I adore it is in what we want, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's take, um, let's take a couple of minutes tonight and pray. We have a special request for a high school student named Sheldon, and we would ask you to pray for him for his safety in Jesus' name. And if you have requests tonight that you need the Lord to help you with tonight, you can signify that by lifting up your hands in faith and making those requests known unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Now let's just take a few minutes and let's just ask him in Jesus' name. Lord, we're just going to believe you to help this young man in Jesus' name. That's right. That's right, Lord. We believe in you. Jesus. Yes, we have confidence in you, Lord, that you can do anything. That's right. That's right. You can have confidence in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
it. There's some good faith praying going on in this place right now. lift up the Lord now and thank him for hearing you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. Praise God. He is able. He is able. I like what that scripture says. He's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. Amen. That is something we just cannot lose track of in Jesus' name. Praise God. While I'm thinking about it, while I'm thinking about it, um, look at the person next to you and say, he's actually leaving the room. Look at the other person and say, he just came back in. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I, I just got to do this stuff while I'm thinking about it. So I, I uh, whatever, made copies of this, found copies of this. This is your first lesson. I give you copies of the second lesson. Now you have the first lesson to go along with the second lesson, okay? Oh, praise God. So there it is. Got my one errand done today, all right? Hey, we've got a couple of things we want to mention to you tonight that hopefully you'll, you'll help us with. Um, first of all, um, our, our children's ministry department is in cooperation with uh, churches all over the world and all over the United States in what they call a campaign called Save Our Children. And this is a, um, um, oh, an offering that they take up every year around Easter time that supports things like what's happening this summer here in Gillette, Wyoming. The Children's Crusade is going to be happening here in Gillette, Wyoming with our national leaders. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the date. August the 3rd. And so we're hosting that, and so we're, we're going to do that. But it's monies like this that funds that. I think I read this morning, I, I got an email from our director, and he said every... Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't have my phone with me, or I'd read it to you. But um, it was a very interesting um, email. He talked about the fact that um, every three days, no, or is it three? No, it's three children a day th through, do, through the efforts of the United Pentecostal Church. Three children a day for the last three years have been receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wow. I'm talking about young people. And so, yeah, you can give God some, some praise there. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole big campaign um, uh, speech or anything like that, but these cards here are, what they are is designed to put quarters in. And I think if you fill out the whole thing, I think you get $10 worth of quarters. And so I would, um, I would ask if, if, if many of you could get involved in this, you know, this, this type of thing. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be a little bit bold tonight. Um, Sister Carnahan has a bunch of these cards back there. We just got them today. That's why they're hot off the press. And if you'd be interested in taking one of these homes and fill it home to your home and filling it out, filling it in with quarters, why don't you go ahead and lift your hand? And we'll give you one of these tonight. Now keep it up. You're going to have to keep it up. Sister Carnahan, why don't you get some help there and they can go out and they can pass these. Yeah, Jeremy, maybe you can help Jennifer if you don't mind. Keep your hands up now. Come on. Keep your hands up. Hot off the press. Yes. There you go. Easy. Just break your piggy bank or whatever you have to do, you know. But this is a very worthwhile cause. We, every year, this church gives to that, SOC, Save Our Children. And um, last year we gave, over, I think it was around $500. This year we, of course, want to do the same thing. We'd like to actually go a little bit higher. 
And so what you're doing is helping us to obtain or achieve that goal. That's what you're doing. You're putting giving money to this church so that we can give money to an organization that will help our children to be saved. And this year we are going to be a recipient of that. Like I said, in August, August the 3rd, it's a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here at this church, right here at this building, we are going to be having a children's crusade. And we are trusting God to fill many with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen to that? So would, if you wouldn't mind, praise God, um, fill these cards out and get these back, you know, before Easter if you can. And the other thing is, is that I know that the children's ministry is in the midst of having a, um, a fundraiser where they're for, for Valentine's Day too, right? This is kind of their quarter, okay? And we kind of let them, um, you know, do some fundraising for their own cause too. And so if you haven't made those orders yet of, of that, what is it? Just a, It's a flower in a vase, right? Two flowers in a vase and for, what is it, $10? Okay, and I think today is the last day that you can order them. Valentine's Day is what, Monday? Sunday, so you guys are getting right under the wire here. So if you haven't made any orders or if you'd like to make some orders, please see one of the children's ministry staff tonight. You're shaking your head, Sister Carnahan. Did I get it wrong? You know, <laughs> uh, we're, not, we're not going there tonight, folks. We are not going there, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She are a fo and if you really want to know what the deal is, she already got her her her, her um, what what was it that we were talking about? <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> she already got it. She got it in the mail yesterday. So don't you give me any of this stuff here. I'm. <laughs> well, that's the best way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> okay. What did we just talk? We we're not going there tonight. Okay, we're not going there. Okay. But if you're in hot water, which I am not, I'm out of hot water. I'm, I'm, I'm in good graces, good graces with my wife. If you're not in good graces with yours or a friend, you can get in good graces tonight by ordering one of those flowers. Okay? Is that good? All right. Youth services this coming Friday here at the church, and those are always exciting, and so we, we like to support them. We don't come because um, we like to kind of let them do it on their own. But this is this coming Friday night. They are having a youth service. And so um, keep that in mind. Next Wednesday night, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, something I don't think we've ever done before uh, that I think of. We usually have our food and fellowships on Sunday. Next Wednesday night, the Gumps, I think, is who are the ones. And the Damians, the Gumps and the Damians. Um, has anybody ever tasted Kevin Gump's cooking? Wow. I mean, the guy is a chef. I mean, he really is. Well, he's the one that's going to be cooking. And from 5.30 to about 6.30, maybe quarter to 7 next Wednesday night, you can forget about making supper. You can come here, and you can have your supper. And I think they're going to be doing soups and sandwiches, that type of thing. And that begins at 5.30 next Wednesday night. So that would be kind of an, a different thing, and we're, we're just going to try that and see how that works. I understand we got a lot of different schedules out there as far as people working and things of that nature, but if this one fits into your schedule, come and join us because those food and fellowships are neat things. I like them. You usually get a decent meal. Not usually. You always get a decent meal. And um, it's always kind of nice to, 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 um, to sit down and eat with your brothers and sisters, isn't it? All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and continue on with our Bible study tonight um, in our discipleship um, project. And, of course, we're talking about, for the next couple of three weeks, we're talking about the church. Last week, we talked about the gathering. We talked about the, um, that membership has privileges. And gathering together is not just some kind of a routine or a ritual that we go into. This is something that really, really begins to um, helps, uh, helps us and strengthens us. While we were singing those songs tonight, while we were praying tonight, did you feel that power? Yeah, that's what happens when we gather together. And I expect that kind of thing. In Jesus name and so um, uh, keep those things in mind membership does have its privileges tonight we're going to be talking about the family aspect of the church and hopefully this will help some people in Jesus name yeah I don't know if we have some copies if you don't have any copies I don't know if those are the right ones um, Mike but um, do you have some okay does everybody have a copy that wants one
What is the penalty for having a book and not bringing it? I think it's like 30 bucks now, isn't it? I think. Yeah. $60 a copy now, is that what it is or something? I can't remember. I, I'm just <laughs> but um, your books are there for you to, to um to go ahead and write notes and that type of thing, and hopefully that um, you know you can you can do that tonight. Again, ag like I said, we're going to look into some scripture and that type of thing, and, and that will help you to understand that the church is a family. Okay, uh, let me get my little thing in here, and I should have a green light here, hopefully, because I have new batteries. Yes, there we go. All right, I think the scripture that we want to turn to tonight right away is First Timothy chapter number three. 1 Timothy chapter number 3, and the um, Bible says there in verse number 15. 1 Peter, or I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 3 and 15. It says, but if I tarry long, this is Paul talking to the, the man Timothy, thou sh that thou shouldest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Wow, that's quite a statement. And that's referring to the church. This is God's gathering. Last week we talked a little bit about, um, you know, what makes it specifically God's church. And we referred to a little bit of the covenant that God, that, that Jesus made with us through his blood. And for us getting into that covenant, you know, and again, this is important for us to understand. This is not ours to you know, to give away. This is God's that he's done this. And so people have the privilege to come into his church, praise God, and be born again. And what a privilege. Now, the Bible uses many word pictures. When you study the word of God, especially the ministry of Jesus Christ, you're going to see that he used things like parables and he used stories and, and situations that, that, um, that were helpful to understand what he was talking about you know I mean you think about almighty God in the flesh he could have blown people away with his knowledge and with his understanding but God um, has always one of the important things for him is is to communicate to you and I and so there's various ways um, pictures and, and uh, metaphors that can help us to understand the nature of the church let me give you some examples here okay and you might want to write these down you know the church is likened unto a kingdom the 13th chapter of, of Matthew refers to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like this. And it's, it's likened unto a kingdom over which the Lord reigns. And we are his loyal subjects. That's one of the metaphors or the, or the story types that Jesus told. The kingdom of God. Another way that, that the Bible um, refers to the, to the church is to a body. You know, if you studied about the spiritual gifts, which is something that we should study, you know, um, Paul referred to the, um, um, uh, to the body of Christ, or she referred to the church as a body with different parts. And this is something, again, that we need to realize, that not everybody in the church is going to do exactly the same thing when it comes to ministering. Now, as far as the truth is concerned and, and as far as the way to get into the church, there is only one way. But there are different um, uh, 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 roles that people are going to play. And the body of Christ, or I should say the illustration of the body, is one way that we can learn that, you know. And then the third way is that, um, uh, that the, the church is referred to as a building, and of course, in a building is another thing that has many parts. Foundation, has the covering, has the roof, has all kinds of things. And of course, when it refers to the church as a building, it refers to Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. Now these are word pictures that God picks out so that you and I can understand what he's talking about. Because our challenge is, is today we've got all kinds of different examples of things, you know, that the world looks at, you know, but that's not the way God looks at it. And so when you come into the church, praise God, it's, it's important for us to understand that he wants you to function in that, in that church. Now tonight, obviously, what we're going to be um, looking at is something that's um, 
the church is called a family, a family of God. And this is a very, very, in my opinion, you know, a very important aspect of the church for us to understand. You know, um, I've seen broken people um, come into the church a long, uh, for a long time. And I've seen them maybe not have much of a family when they came into the church, but when they got into the church of the living God, praise God, all of a sudden, family came to the, f to the forefront. Amen. I was one of them. When I came to the church myself, I came as a single parent. And um, it, was very, it was a struggle for me, you know, but there were people in, in that church, that local church, that helped me out. And boy, I mean to tell you, it made, it made quite a difference in my life. And these are the considerations that we need to make, praise God. Now this connection called the church, or called the family, we share as a spiritual family. This is something that God goes into. And you know, God is the one that, that, that defines this. Now as all of you know, in fam families are not perfect. Maybe yours is, but mine wasn't. You know, there were family clashes. There were differences of opinion. There were times when there was a little bit of arguing going on, that type of thing, you know. Those are the, some of the things. Now, when we get to heaven, things are going to be a little bit different. But while we're here on this earth, we can expect that kind of stuff. And sometimes people have that misconception where they come into the church and they think everything is going to run smooth and everything's going to be perfect. Well, that would be okay if, if it wasn't, if human beings weren't in the church. But people like you and I are in the church, and so we have to expect, we have to expect that there's going to be problems, there's going to be clashes, and we can do that type of thing. Now let me ask you a couple of questions here, and you can think about this, maybe write some things down if you want to, but what are some things about your physical family that right now, if you could change them, what would they be? Your family, your immediate family right now, some of the things that's going on in your life right now, if you could change those things, what, what, what kind of changes would you make? Yeah, we might say, well, that everybody would see everything my way, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's not going to happen, okay? Well, on the same token, let me ask you the same, uh, another question, same thing. What are some of the things about your physical family that you're kind of proud of? Hmm. Think about that. Yesterday was kind of a proud day for me. Um, I have called my mother um, on her birthday. She turned 96 yesterday. And um, chipper as ever could be, you know, she was having a good time. My sister was there, and she was kicking, cooking her a nice lunch. And my mom was just in seventh heaven. She said she had everything she wanted right there. And I thought to myself, my goodness, that's, that's, that's a pretty neat thing, praise God. And so obviously, you know, there are things about our physical family that we'd like to see changed. And also there are things that we kind of like. Now think about that, you know, because the spiritual family a lot of times is going to operate the same way. Amen. You might see somebody in it or you might see something going on that you think, boy, this ought to be changed. Well, just be careful with that, okay? Because you want to know something? One of the reasons that God designed the church to become the family is that families are one of the greatest influences that people have. Whether you like that or not, you know, your family is a very, very big influence. And that's one of the reasons why God designed the church to be a place where people could gather together, all different walks of life, all different, you know, um, uh, levels of, 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 of achievement and that type of thing, and where they could become something that could blend into something that the Lord, um, you know, wants to do, praise God. You know, we're shaped. Somebody said one time, you can't change the weather, but you can change the atmosphere. Yeah, not the, not the, I'm not talking about the natural weather. I'm talking about the atmosphere inside your, your little um, domain right now. And that's one of the things that I've seen. I've seen people come into the church and probably having very, very difficult times, but all of a sudden, two or three or maybe 10 or 15 or maybe 20 started worshiping and praising God and lifting him up. And all of a sudden, there was a faith that come into the place and that began to be let loose. And you could see how that began to change different people right there in that service. You got to realize something, folks.
that's what God designed. That's the kind of power that he gave us, praise God. Would you like to just lift your hands right now and ask the Lord to give you some understanding to that? Come on, you are important in the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm glad about, that we can, we can make a difference. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, we can make a difference, praise God. That's right. Just remember that. You can make a difference, and God wants to help you to make a difference. Yes, he does. Praise God. Before we, we look at the, on the screen here, let me show you a scripture that kind of represents this. Look at Acts chapter number 2. Go to Acts chapter number 2. Let me remind you of something here. Acts chapter number 2, and let me begin reading in verse number 36. Verse 36, Acts 2 and, 32 and 36. The Bible says this, of course, is Peter's finishing up of his sermon that he had on the day of Pentecost, an explanation of what was going on. And I'm so glad that we can get some explanation, aren't you? Well, he, he ended this up by saying, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, one of the reasons he said the house of Israel is because that's exactly who he was talking to. There were the nation of Israel had, had, uh, had come to Jerusalem for one of the major feasts. And, of course, that audience was largely made up of those kind of people, of the Israelis. And so he wanted them to know, everyone, that Jesus Christ was, is Lord, praise God. Now, the Bible says when they heard this in verse 37, many of you remember this scripture. It says they were pricked in their heart. And the Bible says, and they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, I'm going to tell you something, folks. You can, call, you can say all you want about the church, but I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you come to the church, there's going to be some things said. There's going to be some things done. God is going to show you and tell you what to do. I'm telling you, and if you can, if you can begin good, get good at taking orders, and, and good at taking commandments and get good at obeying, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to find some tremendous strength in your life. I'm telling you, folks, the church, the house of God, the gathering of his church, this is what God will do. He will give us marching orders, praise God. Well, the Bible says in 38 there, verse 38 that is, that's exactly what happened. The Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of the Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There it is. Instructions were given. He told them exactly what they needed to do and what they could expect. Praise God. And I believe in that, folks. That's why I'm telling you, God has designed a system in this world, no matter how bad the world gets, no matter how negative it is, He's designed a place where His people, the church, can gather, praise God, and they can hear from the Lord. Come on, aren't you glad that you can hear from God and that things can get done, <laughs> needs can be met? Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks, this membership has its privileges. That's what I'm trying to, trying to help somebody understand. And one of those benefits is, is that we are a big family and we can come together, praise God. I don't know about you, but when I was a young boy, my grandmother, I didn't, um, she died when, back in 1970, but she had 36 grandchildren. And, um, and she, uh, she had nine children, and so it was a big, big, big family. And most of that family lived within probably 30, 40 miles of where she lived. And so at Christmas time, when I was a small boy anyway, they would, con they would just converge. And at her house, you know, all day on Christmas Day, there would be a huge celebration. And I have fond memories of those things. I can remember that. Family was important back then. You know, I know today family's kind of taken a tough hit. But you know something? We can come back into the church. And we can begin to get an emphasis of what God really wants to do in the family unit. You might be sitting here tonight and maybe you're, you're, you're 
um, physical family is kind of in shambles or maybe there's some tough things going on. But I want to assure you, you've come into the right place where the family unit, the spiritual family unit can get fixed in the name of Jesus. Oh, again, would you like to just lift your hands and would you like to just receive what the Lord would want to do for you? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the scripture says, and let me just continue this for, for a few more seconds, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, say, save yourself from this untoward generation. Well, the point I'm trying to make is God is still calling people. There's still people coming into his church, and we can be glad about that. Now, again, when you talk about a family, a family is diverse with each member demonstrating common traits along with individual unique characteristics. That's what makes a family, you know, pretty cool in my, in my book. They're not all the same. Not everybody's doing everything exactly like everybody should do it. And that's what brings the diversity. And this is something we should expect. Now, these lessons have something called the big idea. And you know what the big idea is? The big idea is because the church is the principal way God relates to people today, the church is who he talks to, not always, but this is one of the principal ways that he does it, we should embrace the church family. We should get to know one another. We should get to love one another. Come on, I understand we got differences even in this room, age differences, philosophy differences, and things like that, but do we not all serve one God? Come on, isn't that one God, the one that we're seeking in Jesus' name? And so keep, a, keep, keep that in mind, praise God. We're not all going to do the same things, but when it comes to the doctrinal issues, though, we all got to be on the same plane. Now, let me ask you a question, and maybe I'll get a little dialogue here, okay? What are some of the key doctrines that everybody in the church has got to embrace? I just mentioned some of them, by the way. But what are some of the key doctrines that everybody in the church needs to embrace. How about over here, in this side? What is that? The Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. You're right, that is an important doctrine that all of us must embrace. What's another important doctrine? Right here, what's that? The receiving of the Holy Ghost. Why? For the promise is unto you and unto your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's an important doctrine. Now, we're not making this stuff up. All we're doing is coming together and saying, God instituted this, and we're going to embrace it. What's another doctrine that, 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 that we must embrace? How about over here? The oneness of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is. Yes. One of the things that God warned his people against in every generation is, is against idolatry. And so we understand that there's not six, three, five, or whatever. There's only one God. That's important. One more. How about one more doctrine that, that um, we must embrace? What is that? The resurrection. Yes, that there is going to be a resurrection. Praise God. Well, the point I'm making, and I think all of you have seen this, is that even though we have our differences, even though we have some things that we do maybe a little bit differently than other people, there are certain things that we don't have any differences in. And this is what helps build a firm foundation, praise God. You know, I remember to demonstrate this, and I want to I just tell this real quickly here, but I had a friend of mine that worked on a job in the southwest part of the state, and he had a person of another persuasion that was interested in, in the Pentecostal movement. And, uh, and the person who was of another persuasion, he said, you know, one thing I don't like about you people is he said that you all have a different way in which you approach God, you know, how you get saved, you know. And this man, you know, who was a Pentecostal pastor, you know, working on the job, he said, no, he said That's, that might be true or that might be said of other organizations, but he said it is not said of ours. And there happened to be just at that time, there happened to be three other men that were working on that same job. Some of them weren't pastors, but they were all members of a Pentecostal church. And what this man did was he led this man to each one of them. Now, this took about the whole day. 
And he just told these people when he, when he led this man up to him, he says, how, do you, how, do you, how are you born again or how do you get saved? And every one of those men said the same thing. Gave him almost the same scriptural references. Well, the story is told that this man who was of another persuasion, that really affected him. And he went home because out of the mouth of he began to study the Word of God and ended up in a Pentecostal church and was baptized in Jesus' name and received the Holy Ghost. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Now that's just an example of how families, yes, we can be diverse, but we can also be unified, praise God. And that is something, praise God, that we have to really, really, really consider. Now on the other side of that, what are some of the differences? What are some of the differences that we have? Anybody want to comment on that? What are some of the differences that we have? What's that? Different talents. That's good. Somebody else. We're at different levels. That's important. Praise God. Now, hopefully you don't want to stay at the same level that you're at. If we come back here in a year and you're at the same level, or maybe decreased a little bit, then there's a problem. Because everybody should want to grow. But you're right. We're all at different levels. Praise God. You know, she had mentioned the talents. You know, can everybody get up and sing and have a beautiful voice? Not everybody does. And so we must understand that there are diversities. And God uses those diversities to reach out further and further and further, praise God. Let's not think that we have to do everything, um, you know, all the same when it comes to talents and stuff like that. You want to know why? Because the church is greater than the sums of some of its part. What does that mean? That means the more good parts that we have that can begin to be assembled, the bigger it can be and the better that it can be. We've got to recognize that. That's what God wants to do. Praise God. You know, corporately, listen to me, folks. What I mean by that is when we all get together, we can accomplish more than we've ever had before. You know, a good example of that is in the United Pentecostal Church International, the missions program. That this year there are hundreds of thousands of people that are being reached, you know, and they're being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now I give God the glory, don't misunderstand me, but it's, a, it's churches like this one, and the church in Buffalo, and the church in Sheridan, and the church in Casper, the church down in Rollins, and the church up in, in Montana, and the church down in Utah that all comes together for a collective purpose and begins to do some efforts together, praise God. And what that does is that gives us the ability to reach further and reach, I mean, reach more people than we can ever reach before, praise God. I'm telling you, the church is a beautiful thing, praise God. It really is. Let me give you some scripture here that will help us to support that. Look at Galatians chapter number 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 six here. And and Sister Carnahan, maybe you could get that on the on the on the screen if you don't mind. It's right up there. Yes. The Bible says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Can you agree with that? You know, every day we should try to do something good, you know. But the Bible says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now, that word household of faith, you could replace that with the word church. It's the same thing. God wants to help us to do something good for one another. Now, what's, one, what's, what's some of the things that we could do good for one another? How about over here? What do you think we could do good for one another? What would be something that would be good? What's that? Pray for one another. The Bible fa absolutely instructs us to do that. How about here in the middle? What would be another way, the way that we could help one another? Sometimes we could teach. How about something else? What, what could we do that would be good? Lifting somebody up, exhorting them, you know, encouraging them. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Okay, one more over here in the cheap seats. <laughs> What's that? 
Well, there's got to be more than that one, you know. I know what you mean. I've, I've been there too. Well, you can, you can help them if they n have needs, you know. Um, and and th this, this is important that we understand that's what a family does. When something goes awry, awry and, and, and maybe somebody falls on some bad times or something like that, man, the family is there to help support that, praise God. And I believe the family of God should be the same way, praise God. This is what God wants to help us to do. As like the scripture says, as we have opportunity, let's take that opportunity, praise God. And so, you know, sometimes we take that for granted. Sister Carnahan, I'm going to have you put that back up on the screen if you don't mind. Thank you. Now, every member of this family should guard himself or, her or herself against allowing familiarity to lead to a lack of courtesy. What does that mean? That means that sometimes the people that we hurt the most are the people that we really should be loving the most. Come on, all of us were part of a family, you know. And I mean to tell you, sometimes we, we, we need to extend the same, cur you know, courtesy, you know, that, 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 other, that we're extending to others. And sometimes it's the church, the family of God, that sometimes doesn't get that extended to them. And that's a sad thing. God wants to help us to do that. I believe he can. I believe we can get better at it. You know, one of the things that, that Jesus taught us is the fact that we need to learn how to love one another. You know, we've got to learn how to tolerate one another too. But that doesn't mean compromise. That just means that we've got to learn that, you know, it was mentioned here, one of the diversities that we have is different levels. Some people just don't know yet. And so we have to be careful that we don't, you know, put a stumbling block. Let me ask you a question here. With whom in your family have you had the most conflict? Who's the person in your natural family that you've had the most conflict with? Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that we're the closest to. Is there a way that you have learned to resolve conflict and continue to love them? Have you learned some things? <laughs> is this your week to learn, is it? Is that what it is? <laughs> Should I advertise those flowers again? Is that what I need to do? No. Bottom line is we've all had conflict, haven't we? We've all had people that have irritated us. We've all had people that got under our skin. But the bottom line is we learned how to resolve conflict, don't we? Well, listen to me. The same thing has to happen in the spiritual church. You've got to expect that sometimes somebody might say something or they might do something, praise God, you know, that, that, that might irritate you. But the bottom line is those conflicts have to be learned to be resolved. Now, conflicts will come. Can I get at least two amens? You know, conflicts are going to come, but they are handled differently in the church. I'm going to give you a couple of examples here, how the Bible teaches us that we got to learn how to handle. Now remember, membership have its, has its privileges. And we're not just gathering together so that we can go and be separate people. We're gathering together because we're becoming a family. This is what's happening. And so you must understand that those conflicts are going to happen, but God will give us advice. He will help us. Remember what I said? When you come to the church, you can expect that you're going to get your questions answered. You can expect that God is going to tell you something. Now, the real key here is are you going to receive that information and go out and do something? That's really the issue here, folks. And that's what we've got to learn to become better and better and better at. Let me show you here, biblically. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 18. And the Bible t shares with us a way in which we can resolve conflict. And I believe in this. I've seen it work many, 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 many times. From the brand new saint to the person who's been in the church for 20 or 30 years. I can remember um, here a few years ago, being on the district board that we had a conflict in our district between two ministers. And boy, I mean to tell you, it was, it was pretty hot. But you know something? We got into that, into that board room, and we began to pray, and all of a sudden God gave the resolution, praise God, and there were two brothers that were in conflict with one another that hugged one another. And I mean to tell you, folks, I love that. That is awesome in Jesus' name. 
And so the Bible teaches us in Matthew chapter number 18 something that we can, we can, you know, we can take home with us. The scripture says in verse 15, moreover, if thy brother, and again, you could transfer that word as somebody in the church. A brother and sister is a family member, aren't they? And we're talking about the family of God here. This is what we're talking about. And so you could transfer that word. The Bible says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. That kind of takes Facebook off of the off the plate, doesn't it? That that you know, I I think that's some uh, tremendous advice. Now the Bible says, if he should hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. And I really believe if we can learn to get this one thing, this first thing out, out of the shoot, I think there'd be a lot of a, a lot of controversy that could be settled. I I really feel like one of the things that the Holy Ghost does for us is helps us to become reasonable people. Now, there might be times when we don't see things the way we should, but believe me, I believe that God can help us through the Spirit. And I believe that if we can come and approach people with that right spirit, I believe that they, they, they can see it pretty clearly. And humility is one of those things that God can help us to do. And so the Bible says if, if you go to that person by yourself and you conflict with that person, there's a good chance that something's going to get resolved. You know, the Bible says, well, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. There it is. Sometimes, you know, we got to get other people involved. But the bottom line is, you know, we do that within the church body. You know, one of the things that I think is a tragedy is if it gets to a place where a brother or sister takes each other to court. I don't think that it should ever be. I think that we should be man or woman enough to be able to resolve every issue in the church. Can somebody say amen? I'm talking about the body of Christ now. I'm talking about the family of God. Bible says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican. I'll tell you something, there's a recourse there. I don't like that verse right there, but it does give us recourse. I'm telling you, God wants to help us to resolve conflict in the church. Let me give you another example of this, Sister Kern. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over. Look at Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. Okay, chapter number 4. That's the one we'll go to then. Okay. Bible says, and I'm going to add a little bit to this. The scripture says in verse number 30, chapter, thir or chapter 4 and verse number 30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Never forget that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Help us, Lord, to do that. Study those words and you're going to find these are things that you and I come in contact with every day. And then the Bible says, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I'm going to tell you the thing that will take care of a conflict quicker than anything else, and that is forgiveness. If we will learn to forgive one another, praise God. You know, how can we, how can we show this more? Well, I mean, I, I think there's always room for improvement. But the bottom line is, praise God, is we want to show it. And so take that up. Think about that. If there's conflict that comes into your life because of people, you know, learn to expect it. Learn that it's going to happen. Learn that, hey, you know, it, it, it's just the way it is. But the bottom line is, I always like to tell people, you know, we have two choices sometimes when conflict comes into our life. The first choice is, is we can pour gasoline on the fire. What happens when you, when you pour gasoline on the fire? Yeah, it makes it pretty rough, doesn't it? Or we can begin to pour water on the fire. And I believe the Lord can help us to do that. And, you know, and I believe that you would, you would become in favor with God when you do things like that in Jesus' name. And so these kinds of scriptures are things that you and I must begin to wholly expect. Now, we fully expect that even if no one else will be, family will be present in times 
of trouble and they will assist us in those times of trouble. You can fully expect that, that a brother or sister sometimes is going to go the extra mile. In fact, Jesus taught us that. He taught us that we should be, you know, willing and able to do that. Praise God. Can you recall a time? Can you recall a time when a family member, whether it was physical or the spiritual family, helped you during a difficult time? Can you recall that? Remember that? Remember how that felt? Praise God. I can recall one time when I was in, in um, north of Salt Lake City, and at that time in the district I was running the sound equipment, and I had to go, and I had to go um, about a day early, and I had to set up the sound system and, and so on and so forth. And when I went that day, um, uh, I was in a hurry. I had a lot of things on my mind, and I had some money in an envelope that I had left at the, um, uh, at the place where I was at the hotel, and that, uh, that envelope full of money got stolen from me. And boy, I mean to tell you, I, it was all the money I had, and I felt pretty bad. But you know, word got back to our spiritual family that one of the brothers was falling on hard times. And about an hour later, later when I was in the sound room and I was setting up the sound equipment, along come the district superintendent, Brother Russell at that time, and he handed me an envelope full of money. And he just smiled at me. He said, Brother, he said, we want to help you. And I'm going to tell you something. I'll never forget what that felt like. I mean, you just you felt like, my goodness, I'm glad that I'm in a family. And so I believe that God will have us to to, um, to uh, not only recognize that and be part of the solution, but sometimes you're going to have the problem and somebody's going to come your way and they're going to be the one that's going to help you. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. That's the way God relates. Let me tell you a story here and maybe then we can, we can um, conclude with, um, with another portion of Scripture here when this is in. But this story is told, it says, if you spent more than a day with them, this is an actual story. If you spent more than a day with them, you saw them fight. Twin brothers who found at least one excuse a day to come up, you know, with a fight with each other. Perhaps the reason was that one was left-handed and the other was right-handed. Maybe that wasn't the big reason, but that did make their fights more interesting. <laughs> now, I know you're laughing because you know exactly what we're talking about here. They fought before school. They fought during school. They fought after school. Seemingly, any reason was sufficient. To the casual observer, they appeared to despise one another, seeking every opportunity to, infl to inflict grave injury on one another until that one day came. That day was during physical education class when the high school boys were playing dodgeball. One particularly large athletic young man, a starting pitcher for the high school baseball team with a throwing arm that was pretty good, caught one of the twins looking the other way and delivered a stunning blow to the side of his head which the dodge, with the dodgeball. Can you feel that pain? Yeah, many of us have, haven't we? The pain could be heard throughout the gym and the uninformed might have expected the other twin to dance with glee and to offer his sincere thanks to the one that inflicted the hurt. But that's not what happened. Can anybody guess what happened? Come on, you know what happened. Everyone there that day who knew well the ongoing conflict between the two was amazed to see the twin who was not standing or who was still standing, run across the gym, jump on the much bigger person and begin to flail away at him and shouting, don't you do that, leave him alone. He's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the same brother, about an hour before that, was fighting with his brother, but now he was compelled because the one fall, fell into hard times. He was compelled to stand up against or with him for that common cause. Listen to me, folks. I've seen that happen more times and more times in the family of God. Let me reiterate, membership has its pr privileges. Whether it be stolen money, 
whether it be somebody coming against them or whatever the case is, I'm telling you something. I thank God for brothers and sisters. Now listen to me. I understand we give God all the glory and all the, pra all the praise, but you've got to understand something. This is a family. This is a family. And I know we got different languages in here. We got different age groups in here. We got different social status. We got all kinds of differences. But isn't it neat that we can come on Sundays and on Wednesdays and we can gather together and we can find some common traits. We can find some common things that we agree on, praise God. And then when sometimes things happen to us that we weren't expecting, we got some brothers and sisters, praise God, that will come to our side. Come on, folks, I'm going to tell you something. This is priceless as far as I'm concerned. This is what it's all about. That's why the big idea. Think about the big idea. Because the church is the principal way that God relates to people today. We should embrace the church family. We should get to try to know every person in this place. We should get to try to help and do whatever we can for everybody in this place. And I'm going to tell you something. It will make a huge difference. I'm telling you, the world is looking for this kind of stuff. And this is why, praise God, we can do that. You know, that's the nature of families. You know, I've had that happen more and more, you know, where, you know, you'd think that somebody wasn't getting along, but that's just the way it is, you know. But boy, I mean to tell you, when, when hard times came, that told the difference in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me tonight? I appreciate the church tonight. I appreciate that the fact that membership does have its privileges. But you know something? I believe that God wants us to pray one for another right now. And I believe the Lord wants to help somebody in this place. Maybe gain some strength and gain some, gain some, some, some confidence, praise God, in the Lord. That's it. I like this. Just gather around one another. If you've got somebody that's close to you right now that you can, you can do that with, just go ahead and begin to offer up a prayer for them in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you, I'm feeling some strength. That's right. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, that's it. Come on, we are not alone. We are not alone, praise God. Oh, isn't that a good feeling? Isn't that a good feeling? Come on, this is the family of God. This is the family of God. What a privilege. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Are you? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God let's sing it one more time I'm so glad I'm a part of 
the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Can we lift our hands and thank the Lord? Come on, membership has its privileges. I'm so glad that I'm a part of his family in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming to this Bible study tonight. I truly hope that it was something that helped you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Don't forget our announcements. You know, thinking about Sunday or um, Friday night at our youth service. And then, of course, if you haven't made your flower order yet, you can do that yet tonight. Next Wednesday night, of course, beginning at 530, we'll have a food and fellowship. So the Lord bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. God bless you.